you dream of that elusive, that shiny Rolleiflex. One of those cameras that Lee Miller used to photograph Hitler's bath. But your wallet lacks a couple of notes, and the interest rates are, well, rather high at the moment. Could this be the answer? A German-made TLR camera by equally legendary brand. This is the Zeiss Icoflex. Could this be the barding camera you've been looking for? Could this equal the Rolleiflex? No, probably not. But this is the very reason I bought the Icoflex back in 2019. I was browsing an auction site and I came across this lovely looking Rolleiflex. I placed the bid and I held the highest bid for the longest time, up until the very last minute of the auction. And then I got overbid and then I got overbid and the price skyrocketed way over what I was prepared to pay for a film camera back then as I wasn't the avid film photographer I am today. So I started looking for alternatives to kind of just dip my toes. And I came across the Zeiss Icoflex and it looked like a nice enough camera. I was able to buy one for a more reasonable price. In true Zeiss tradition, the version names are kind of confusing. We use the same name for different versions. According to the manual I got with the camera, this is an Icoflex 2A. I reckon it is from the 50s, 60s. They did a couple of redesigns of it, and the later models kind of started looking like a rolly copy. And it was also available with two lenses. I have the Nova lens. It was also available with a size lens. The size lens is, according to internet, a bit sharper, and the Nova lens a bit cheaper. Anyhow, I did shoot with the Icoflex for well over a year, and I loved it. It led me into this rabbit hole we call film photography. So in a way, it's the most expensive camera I own. But it has been sitting on my shelf for longer than I like to admit. So today, I thought we would have a look at the camera, as well as go out and shoot with it. So I was going to shoot from my tripod with this camera, as I actually think this camera is a bit special. It kind of suits tripod use a bit better than my other TLR camera, my Rolleiflex. But I forgot to pack, pack the tripod plate, so we are forced to go handheld today. Luckily, I loaded some ISO 400 film in this camera, Fomapan 400. And I've rated for 800, even though it's quite sunny and bright, we are still in the early spring. So to get an adequate shutter speed, I kind of needed ISO 800. Uh, but foam pan 400 is quite versatile, so it will not be a problem. And uh, shooting F8 here uh, gives me one 100 second, which is just perfect. Let's continue. Let's see if we can find a couple more images. So that thing I said about this being more suited for tripod use is really just a polite way of saying this is a weird camera to handle. First you have to hold it in your right hand to be able to focus it. Then you have to switch grip to be able to cock the shutter. Yes, you have to cock the shutter and then to be able to release it as well. And then on top of that you have this flappy hood. But the matte screen is quite bright, way brighter than my Rolleiflex and it might even rival my Hasselblad, even though my Hasselblad is substantially younger than this camera. So that's always that. So as I said out in the field there, this is a kind of a weird handling camera, at least by modern standard. As I said out in the field, you need to switch grip to be able to operate the camera, and that is true. 
What I didn't mention is that uh, all the settings are done from the front of the camera. Kind of an old school way of doing it. You have this cog that you use to adjust the shutter speed. You have a small little window where you can see what shutter speed you've selected. And then on the other side, you have this little lever that you use to adjust your aperture. And you then have a window on the side. Of course you do. And right next to the lever for the aperture, you have another lever. And that's your timer. You never confuse the two, I promise. So as you might know, I'm, as you might have figured out, I'm kind of a photography nerd. And I recently watched a documentary about Mybridge. So sorry if I'm butchering the name, I'll just put it on, on the screen as well. Anyhow, he's the photograph uh, photographer that took those famous photographs of the horse galloping. And they managed to capture a horse with all of its hooves from the ground, just in the air. Quite a famous series of photographs. Um, I knew about the image before watching the documentary, but I didn't know about the photographer. Uh, anyhow, before that, apparently he did quite a lot of landscape photography. And what's interesting with his photograph, uh, if you compare him to like the Ansel Adams and the F64 group that came after him, he always included a bit of grit in his images, some, a little mess in a corner or something like that. And well, this scene kind of reminded me of that. We'll see if it's as good as his photographs. I doubt it, but yeah, kind of what's on my mind. I basically just think about photographs and food. That's me. Yeah, let's see if we can find a couple more photographs today. I kind of want to finish off the roll. Couple more things with this camera. This camera really tries hard to protect you from unwanted exposure. Kind of nice of it. So you do need to cock the shutter manually. And still, it won't fire. Could be because you haven't advanced the film. There's a little window right next to the viewfinder that's there to help you. If it's white, that means you have exposed that frame already. So you turn the advancing knob. You hear a little click, and the window is now red, ready to fire. And still, it refuses. That's because you need to pop the hood as well. And now you can fire the camera. Simple. Dikeflex is a fun new creation. Some of the images are surprisingly sharp, and some are, well, let's just call them retro. In my experience, around f8, f11 will produce the sharpest images. But it is a fun camera in that way that when you nail it, it hits hard. And in between, it is this retro fussiness. At least it's something different from your digital photography. It felt great being out with the old gal. I really like this camera. It's quirky enough to make it fun and interesting. And I remember back when I got it that I thought this is a totally different experience than your digital photography. As I said, this is kind of my gateway drug into film photography. So is the Icoflex a worthy replacement for the Rolleiflex? Well, we already established, no, it isn't. 
The Rotoflex is refined. It's in general just a better camera in almost all aspects. And it was the choice for almost all professionals in, back in the days. The Icoflex isn't that. It should probably not be compared to the Rotoflex. A more fair comparison would be like the Rolecord. And in all honestly, um, some other TLR cameras from like Minolta, Mamiya, etc. I'm sure are equally sharp, equally good and perhaps even a bit better. But there is something to having a German made TLR camera that's just slightly cooler. Anyhow, the Icoflex is a nice camera. It's fun and it's quirky and it takes surprisingly sharp images every now and again. But be aware, you might end up spending more money than you bargained for. That is, if you aren't already bitten by the film bug. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Do take care and bye.